Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and we're looking to do an advanced placement review on acids and bases. This is also going to be mixing with some equilibrium, but uh, these are some specific con specific concepts that show up pretty much every year. Alright, so a couple things here. One, can you determine the pH of a strong acid? acid you should be aware this is in fact a strong acid. So turn the pH um, for a strong acid it's just negative log of the 0.1 and at this point you really shouldn't need a calculator for this. Um, a 1 molar will give you a 0 pH, 0.1 gives you 1, 0.01 gives you 2, 0.001 gives you 3 and so forth. So this particular answer you can give if you'd like what the pH is. 1. Would you like to just how would you describe the Ka value of hydrochloric acid? It is, I guess, if I were to pick a word, it'd be super big. It goes to completion. Um, the reaction it uses is the same as all acids, HX, so let's use that, plus H2O yields H3O plus plus X negative. Um, and it happens to go to completion, so it's 0 0.1, not playing a role, 0, 0 minus 0.1 to 0, plus 0.1, plus 0.1 to, and now this is 0.1, which is hence where we got this from, uh, in right here. And I do also have put a molar x negative, but because this is a strong acid, this is neutral. All right, um, draw a picture of this point molar uh, acid in the beaker. Okay, that's fine. Draw a little top water line, and because it's a goals completion, I only draw this stuff here. So it's going to be H plus ions, X negative H plus. The more I draw, the more concentrated it gets. All right. Um, draw a picture of a 0.05 molar. Well, if this is 0.1. 0.05 should just be um, H plus and X negative, perhaps many. All right, so next guy. Um, determine the concentration of, or the pH of a 0.5 molar NaOH. Now this guy uh, is going to be producing a base solution from this equation, Na. OH, probably should have had to write these out, and a plus plus OH negative. Um, so this is based purely off solubility. The more soluble it is, the more it produces bases. And the pH is just going to be negative log of 0.5. Um, now this guy. Um, <coughs> Use your calculator. Negative log 0.5 is 0.3. Now, at this point, 0.3 is the pOH. So we want to flip that over to pH by subtracting 14 from that, and or 14 from that guy will give us 13.7, uh, and that's our answer. All right, justify null of all the following statement. NUH does not have a KB value because it does not undergo hydrolysis. Um, I guess I might say that's true. It does not have a KB. It does have is a K, well, potentially a KSP because this thing is based off of solubility. Um, KSP would be very large, once again, because this thing goes to completion. Okay. Draw a 
top picture of the basic solution provided. Okay, we have N A plus O H negative. Keep on drawing to the matches of the concentration that you'd like. All right, next up, a pH meter and 10 milliliter point uh, five molar nitrate are, are placed in a beaker. 12 milliliters of 0.5 molar cell um, and two drops of phenolphthalein are added to the beaker. Write the neutralization reaction. Okay, now again, there's different versions. If we had the molecular version, it would be this. It would be NaOH plus HCl yields NaCl plus H2O. If we do the net ionic, it because these are both strongs, as you saw um, from the drawings above, it, they aren't actually together. They're separate. So it's going to be H plus plus OH negative yields, once again, water. All right, would it be clear, pink or green? All right, well, we've done some stuff with phenolphthalein in the past. Phenolphthalein should be in a, well, phenolphthalein, 10 milliliters, 0.5 molar, and they react in a one to one ratio. So who wins out here? 12 milliliters of 0.5 molar acid. So it looks like this is the limiting reactant. And therefore, there is excess acid, and we should therefore be acidic in the end. And phenolphthalein is pink in bases and clear in acid, so this would be clear. Sketch the relative pH for graph for this curve. All right, there's 12 milliliters, but at 10 is something relatively interesting happens. Um, when we have our beaker, and to say we have in this beaker our base, OH negative, I drew a small beaker, we're dropping in the H pluses. We start out relatively um, basic, and then we start neutralizing and right at all right, start that over. All right, so it's, it dwindles like so, but right at 10 milliliters, we get a pretty good sized drop like that. This is our equivalence point, and this when at this point we have zero OHs are now gone, and our beaker only has H, well, nothing in it, just at this point would be. Cl negatives and Na pluses and of course water. Put that on the side here. All right. Um, in the figures below, sketch the reactants and the products. Okay, well, the bigger. All right. So there we go. So we have um, Na plus OH negative H plus Cl minus H plus Cl minus products add them together. We're going to get now in this case Na plus Cl minus Cl minus, and then we'll have an H plus left over, and we're going to have in this case a water molecule. There you go. All right. Point 0.5 molar acetic acid, commonly used as a preservative in food industry. All right, what does the pKa mean? Um, well, it means a couple of things. To me, it means that when we have a reaction, uh, our beaker, let's say, that contains some of my weak acid, which you, let's call Hx, and it contains some of my conjugate, which is X negative, when both are present, in the beaker, regardless of the concentrations, my pH is going to be fairly close to 
This exact pH is when the concentrations are equal. We call that the one-half equivalence. So this picture right here is would be of a one-half equivalence. And at that point, my pH would be 4.76. So you could say in, in actual layman terms, you could say it's the pH at the one-half equivalence. Or you could say it's the general buffer pH. The buffer for zone of that particular acid. What's the K of this thing? All right. Um, well, uh, for this guy here, PA, if you take the, if you do the negative log um, of the Ka of the Ka, you get the pKa. So if you take the ten to the negative pKa, you'll get the Ka. So we can calculate that, and that will be second long, and then negative. 4.76 and it is 1.73 e to the negative fifth. All right, and that answers one of my questions. I'll put it here 10 to the negative 4.76 equals 1.73 e to the negative fifth, and this is my answer. Determine the pH of the solution. All right, so 0.5 molar acetic acid. Okay, and the way we do a weak acid is as follows. I'm gonna write out my whole reaction, HX plus H2O. This would be a pretty standard question. I'm gonna write a whole ice table out, but that would not be required for an answer. Initial stoic ratio, and this is 0.5, not playing a role, 0, 0, minus x, plus x, plus x, 0.5, minus x, x, and x. Plug in all of our equilibrium stuff into the expression, the equilibrium expression, that's 4.5. Um, 1.73 e to the negative fifth equals x times x over with the shortcut rule 0.5 and x equals the concentration of H plus ions and negative log and that gives you the pH. This is a very standard problem and you would want to be able to jump all over this problem Maybe one of the most anticipated questions here as far as acid and base is concerned. So x equals 2.9 e to the negative third. Now, I circled that, but that's not the answer. Negative log of the previous value because I'm near the acid will give me my pH. All right, so negative log the previous answer. And I got 2.5, right? And then indicate that as your answer. 2.5. Draw a resumitation of the beaker in the beaker. Uh, okay, so now this is a weak acid, so we're not getting nearly 100% ionization, so you'd want to draw a number of acids that are just together and then show maybe one of them that is ionized through hydrolysis. Surely would not want to draw two because the already our proportion is quite small. Um, all right. Next, we have. 
sodium acetate is the conjugate of acetic acid. What's the K, pKb of acetic acid? All right, so in this case, remember sodium C2H3O2, and then we have HC2H3O2. This is the acid, this is the conjugate. Just so you know, this is a weak acid, and this is its conjugate base, which happens to be a weak base. All right, so let's determine the BKB of a C acid. All right, so um, in this situation, you could just subtract from the 14 from this guy. All right, 14 minus the 4.76, and I get 9.24. All right. Uh, 14 minus the 4.76 and equals 9.24. Of course, you could do it backwards and say, okay, KA times KB equals KW. You have this KA located here. You could divide out the KW for KB solve that question, negative log it to get this one. Um, so either way it works. Um, second log, negative 9.24, 5.75 e to the negative 10. All right, so 5.75 e to the negative 10. If you have a solution, if you have a solution that has equal constant, all right, get that back. All right. Sorry about that. All right. If you have a solution that equal concentrations of acetic acid and sodium acetate, what would be the, um, the general pH? Right, it's a very good question. Now, a couple things you want to note about the pH of things. There are two things that determine the pH of something. One is the K value, and two is the concentration. All right, so in this case, they're saying that they have equal concentrations. That means these, this guy, and this guy are an equal concentration in a beaker. But, all right, note that this guy has a KB that is 5.7 e to the negative tenth. And the KA and KB, you can't have both of these guys get stronger. One's stronger, one's weaker. T charters are 1.0 e to the negative seventh. So whenever I see this value here, I note that the base is weaker than the acid. Note acid. Remember, K values just denote strength. If you want to compare the strength of two things, compare their K values. So this thing is going to be acidic. Why? Equal concentration and the acid has a larger K value. Noted right there. Calculate the actual pH of this thing. All right, so. There's a long way and there's the easy way. The long way is just okay. Uh, well, we don't even have the concentrations, so we'll have to use the shortcut way. But the long way would be this, HX plus H2O yields H3O plus plus X negative. This is the acetate. This is the acid initial Stoic ratio, end. All right, you, the, the concentrations are equal. If you have them, you can plug them in. It doesn't matter what they are. You can even make them up. As long as they're the same, you'll we'll get the same answer. And that answer is 4.76. That's my pH. 
If they're equal, we're also known to be what's called the half equivalence point. And you should be aware that the pH of that point is equal to the pKa. And of course, the pOH of that position is called, would be 9.24. All right, next. It says we have a 50 milliliter sample of 0.5 molar acetic acid and 1.25 grams of sodium acetate added to it. What's the concentration of the, okay, so what's the concentration of the acetate I have? All right, so uh, let's do this here. I have 1.2025 grams of acetic acid. Should probably give the molar mass right there because we're gonna add that up. Um, grams to moles. And let's add up that molar mass of this guy. Here's my periodic table here. All right, so I got one sodium, which is 23, 22.9, plus two carbons, which is 12 and 24, plus th three hydrogens, plus two oxygens is 32. 81.9 grams per mole. All right, let's go back to where we're at. Um, one mole is 81.9 grams. All right, so how many moles do we have here? All right, 1.025 divided by the previous answer is 0 0.0125 moles. All right, so 0 0.0125 moles and asking me for the concentration here it's in 50 milliliters 0 0.05 liters and this is the answer to our first question All right. of course the i did this is the mass of the 1.25 this is the mass of the whole thing even though they want just the concentration of that um I should probably be a little more careful to show that this is a, uh, from here to here, is a 1 to 1 ratio um, to the acid ion. So we'll go with this, 0 0.0125 um, divided by 81.9 is point. I wrote that down wrong here. I'm not sure where I got that. Let's recheck my math again here quickly. 1.025 divided by 81.9 is 0 0.0125. Okay. Divided by 0 0.05 equals 0 0.25 moles per liter. All right. So this is 0 0.25 moles per liter. And that's the concentration and the answer for letter A. What's the pH of the solution? Okay, so again, uh, this is the exact thing I'm gonna do, so I'll just do it here. Um, I'm gonna erase my little circles there, just because I can. And we'll erase that little guy. And we'll erase this little guy. So now they're not equal, just plug in their concentrations. I am using the acid version here, but I can also use the base version of hydrolysis. This guy is denoted at being 0.5, and this guy is 0.25. Run the math through. Zero. We're going to lose x of this. Gain x. Gain x. This is going to be 0.5 minus x, and x and x. Now notice here that I have just divided my moles by my original volume because it's a solid and it's not going to expand the volume at all from 50 milliliters. But if we add two liquids together, then I would need to recalculate both of these concentrations, this one and this one, so that I would be able to get the new accurate concentration. Now this guy is going to be 0.25 plus the 0.5, right? We're going to then just I'm going to run this down here for our mathematics. Um, our K A in this thing is right above here. 
um, 1.73 e to the negative fifth. All right, that's from about 1.73 e to the negative fifth equals x times 0.25, using the shortcut rule right there, divided by one more shortcut rule, 0.5. This is what we call a buffer when we have both acid and base together in the weak forms, we call them buffers. You'll notice that the regards to the concentrations, we're just going to have a little division here. The main deal controlling this is this guy. All right, so it would be um, 1.73 e to the negative fifth times 0.5 divided by 0.3 and Granted, not a whole lot of change. 2.88 e to the negative fifth. All right, x equals 2.88 e to the negative fifth. All right, and then if they ask for just the H plus concentration, that would be the answer. Be careful about that. Sometimes they don't ask for the pH, but negative log of this particular thing here. Um, We'll give you my pH. All right, so negative log previous calculation 4.5. 4.5. And that's my answer. All right, also a good example of a buffer. Now, again, in this situation, we're going to show all of these examples because they're all. Possible. So here I have 0.5 molar acetic acid and I have 1.25 molar, um, 0.1 molar of the NaOH. So write out the net ionic equation, the net ionic. So what happens here if I have my acid, it's going to be HC2H3O2 plus OH negative. The Na will be a spectator. This will produce water. The OH and the H will form water, and I'll have a C2H3O2 negative. This will be weakly acidic, and this is weakly basic. Determine the number of moles of acetic acid and hydroxides before the reaction starts. Okay. Now, a few things I'll, I'll mention here is that we have 0.5 moles. Uh, and 1.1. So this is five times more concentrated. Our volume is 50 and 125, so more volume. Either way, let's do this. Molarity equals moles per liter. Multiplying these two together gives me moles. So moles equals molarity times liters. All right. So I'm going to do that twice. It's going to be 0 0.05 liters times 0.5. That's going to give me half of that, 0 0.025 moles. And then I have 0.1 times 0.125. One tenth of that is just 0.1. It was 0 0.0125 moles and divide that by the new, so it says the mole, so I'm done with that question. The next one says new concentration. So I'm going to just continue here and divide these both by the new volumes. And there will be points associated with both of these. The calculations are always the same, so make sure you're just familiar with them. New volume will be 125 plus 50 is 571. So 0.175 in 0.175. All right. All right. 0 0.025, 0 0.025 divided by 0.175. All right, this guy here is going to be 0 0.142, and this guy is 
0 0.0125 divided by 0.175 equals 0 0.071. 0 0.7 0 0.0714 and these are the two concentrations of these ions when they're mixed. Uh, I shouldn't say that. So these are the moles. All right, let's, so let's back up one second here. Um, all right, so I'm going to just backtrack on that one second here. Getting ahead of myself a little bit. All right, so I have my moles of each. All right, now what's happening here is this. I want some new concentration of acetic acid after the reaction is mixed. All right, so sorry about that. What happens is though, is I have my acid, which is that HX, and it's gonna react with the hydroxides. And I am gonna have, each hydroxide I can knock out one of my HXs. So the way, this is the way they're going to show it on the answer key on, on, on the AP board. 0 0.025 and 0. This is the H pluses and this is the X negative. This is the H plus and this is the X negative or the acetate ion, this guy here. And over the course of the reaction, the hydroxide can knock out one of them in a one-to-one -one ratio. So I will lose one of these and I will gain one of these every, for every one of those I have. Minus 0 0.0125 and I will gain 0 0.0125. For a second, I now again, if I just have H um, X, which is my weak acid, and X negative, which is my weak base, I literally just mix them together and plug them into the ice table like I did in the last problem. But when I have a, an acid and a base like this, then they're going to react by neutralization. And, and the acid, the base, will roll the acid over to its conjugate. All right, so. This guy here is just 0 0.0125. And the other one, easy to do in your head there too, is just 0 0.025 minus 0 0.0215. And that's, it looks like half of it. All right, so that's another point. All right, so we have point 0, 1, 2, 5. Of course, I can make most of their halves. All right, so now that means that in our solution, let's just draw the reaction here. That you can, do, you can use a nice table to this, but there's a shortcut. H, we use HX plus H2O. Going slow here. X negative plus. Um, H3O plus initial stoic ratio and they're both this guy and this guy plug in your current concentrations at this time they're the same and when they're the same then you know that this is the half equivalence point and my pH is 4.76 which is my pKa I would have no problem doing this right here. I have 0.125 and or 0 0.0125 and 0 0.0125, both the same. So what I'd have here is this. When I fill my ice table out, it'd be K A equals point 0, 1, 2, 5 times x, and that would be minus x, plus x, plus x, that's where that x comes from, over point 0, 1, 2, 5. This and this will cancel. Ka, Ka equals x, 
H plus ion concentration is what that is, right here, and there goes the Ka. Negative log that gives me my pH, which is that. All right, so one another one here. 25 milliliters of acetic acid with an unknown concentration is mixed with 0.5 molar NUH. 20 milliliters of the base required reach equivalence. All right. The unknown, which is the acetic acid, is more or less concentrated than the base. Well, there's 0.5 molar and 20 milliliters. All right, so 25 milliliters required. So when we do this, we have our known and we have our unknown table. Molarity, moles, and liters. The, un the known is 0.5. And it has a volume of 0 0.020 liters. And this guy is 0 0.025. At equivalence, these two guys are equal. So we have the same number of moles in a larger volume. Therefore, it is less concentrated than the known base. And you could even you could strip to solve for it if you'd like. Solve for the moles, plug it over here, and there you go. Pretty common question. All right, there it goes. So determine the actual concentration of the acid. All right, so let's go back there and we'll just do it quickly. And then we will see what we have for numbers here. All right, so <clears throat> this table is no, got to show work for it. So the solve for that is going to be 0 0.5 times 0 0.02 equals 0.5 times 0 0.02 0 0.5 times 0 0.02 equals 0 0.01 0 0.01 divide this that gets shuffled into here 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.025 and like I said it's a little bit less concentrated than the known um, divided by 0 0.025 and 0 0.4. Okay, and equals 0 0.4, which of course is a little less concentrated than the 0.5. All right. So actual is 0 0.4 moles per liter. How many milliliters of NaOH will be required to reach the half equivalency point? All right, so. In this situation, um, we want to get halfway. So let's go back to here. Um, see where our numbers were again. All right. So in this situation, we neutralized it. All right. So in 25 milliliters of acetic acid uh, with known concentration mixed with 0.5 molar NUH and 20 milliliters to reach equivalence. So 10 milliliters will reach half equivalency. All right, we're going to go back there again. So 10 milliliters requires for half of it because 20 milliliters got all the way. Draw a picture of the half equivalent speaker. Okay, so we did here was we took um, our acid, HX, and we right over the base, hydroxide, and we produced HX and water. All right, so we're halfway through. So whatever we started with here is also now here. So uh, if it's a weak acid, uh, I think it's a unknown acid, I think is what it was. So I'm just going to call it HX, HX. And whenever I draw these, I also must draw X negative, X negative. And you could draw two waters, although sometimes those are left off. All right. That's the halfway point. Will the half will the halfway will the, the half equivalence point will be a sig, basic or neutral? Alright, so I'm gonna check that, make sure I have the right acid to begin with. Alright, and it says uh, okay, it is acetic acid. Okay. Now we know about the acetic acid from above here is that my acid has a is stronger than my base. Um, my Ka value is right here, so my acid, because 
my Ka, my acid is stronger than my base, then they have equal concentrations of acid and base, this thing is going to be acidic, not going to be neutral. And that's because my Ka is bigger than my Kb, and we have equal concentrations. Sketch the titration curve. Okay, so what does it look like as we dump these two together? We do know that at um, 20 milliliters is when we run out. I have an acid and I'm dumping the base in it. So I would like to dump it in, dump it in, dump it in, dump it in, and all of a sudden right there it spikes. Um, this is the area where we are buffering, where we have both weak acid and the conjugate base. Halfway point, right at 10, these two concentrations are equal. Right here, HX is now gone. Um, all right, 0.5 uh, some grams of an unknown acid. Um, Solids dissolved 50 milliliters of dissolved water and titrated with 0.1 mole NOH. Titration creation curve is given. So once again, we're we're kind of right here, 20 milliliters. Um, estimate the pKa. Well, the pKa is probably right here, let's just say five. That's kind of where I would cut across here and say right in the middle is the halfway point, the pH of the halfway point, or the general buffer zone. Using the curve, determine the molar mass of the acid. Okay, now the molar mass of the acid is grams per mole. Um, my grams is 0 0.5. I just need my moles. All right, well, the known unknown table, will we could use that, although it's getting less useful. So I know at equivalence, my moles of my acid still equal the moles of my base. So I'm just gonna solve off of the moles of my known at the, half point, at the half equivalence point. All right, so my known is gonna be 0.1. Uh, molarity equals moles per liter all right, so multiplying those two together gives me moles. 0.1 times 0 0.02 liters is equal to 0 0.02 liters uh, moles. Um, back up one second. All right, um, 0 0.002 moles. And that's the moles of my known which equals the moles of my unknown. And I'll put that in right here, 0 0.002 moles. Divide the two and I get a molar mass. Keep in mind the smallest molar mass I can have would be one. 0.5 divided by 0 0.002 and I get 250. And that is my answer for the acid. You, all right, um, number two. Okay, using the titration curve, determine the Ka of the acid. Okay, so anytime you want the K value, you need to do one thing, which is fill out the ice table. So I'm going to do that right here. I have HX plus H2O yields H3O plus plus X negative. A couple of things you need for this. Initial stick ratio end. I need a pH to fill the whole table out, as you'll see. Most common places to fill it out would be at the initial, halfway, or at the equivalence. Well, it's not always you can do it. You can do it anywhere you want. So this is going to be uh, initial concentration. Um, we don't have initial concentration yet, but I'm going to find it out here. So I have, I have point zero. I had point zero zero two moles of my unknown in there originally. So I'm going to go 0 0.002 moles is what I had. And it, it was in uh, 50 milliliters, 0 0.05 liters. And that's my initial concentration of my original acid before I started. 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.05 and I get 0 0.04. All right, this is 0 0.04. 
not playing a role, 0, 0, minus x, plus x, plus x. All right, now, in this case, it's just x, x, and 0 0.04 minus x without a k value or without a um, uh, I would be missing two variables. What I do have is the pH at this point and I'm going to plug that in. So second log negative 4.1 that's on the table there 4.1 is 7.9 e to the negative 7.9 e to the negative fifth. All right, and at that point I have I have x, and therefore I can figure everything else out here. So I'm going to go with it right here. The Ka equals 7.9 e to the negative fifth. Seven point nine e to the negative fifth. I'm gonna just square it here because I have two of them over using a shortcut rule here. 0 0.04. Although I can just plug that x value in there and subtract them. Probably should do that. Would be better. Um, Seven point nine e to the negative fifth. Square that thing. Divide it by 0.04, and my k value is 1.56 e to the negative 7. All right, it goes 1.56 e to the negative 7th. All right, negative there someplace. All right, using your concentration. Calculate the percent ionization. Okay, so percent ionization is based on what I have, how much actually flipped over. So percent ionization means that I had an original concentration um, of 0.04. What fraction of it actually moved over? So this is typically considered my change. And then this is my original. This is going to be 7.9e to the negative fifth. And then, of course, times 100 equals, all right, 7.9e to the negative fifth divided by 0.04 times 100 and we get about 0.19 percent 0 0.1 not even 1 percent 9 percent okay all right lots of calculations here all right number 10 10 milliliters of ammonia was titrated with 0.1 molar HCl. Its equivalence point was reached after 8 milliliters. Write the molecular reaction taking place. All right, so, all right, the molecular reaction would just simply be HCl plus NH3 yields NH. Four plus, and then C or B, so CL would go there, and then um, plus water. Actually, that's it right there. So this guy is just going to neutralize that. There we go. Write the net ionic equation in place there. It would be simply H plus plus NH3. yields and H four plus. All right. At four milliliters, will the solution be acidic, basic, or neutral? All right. Well, in this case, at four milliliters, we're at the one half equivalency point. 
and it doesn't give the oh there it is okay the kb uh, for the ammonia is that like right away when i see that number i know it's teeter tipping on 1.0 e to the negative seventh all right so that means that my kb is bigger than my ka all right so at equal concentrations my kb is winning all right and therefore my reaction my solution should be uh, basic at eight milliliters will solution be as basic sig sig neutral well, all we have there is nh4 plus we don't have anything else this is a weak acid it's the conjugate of a weak base to the best of your ability draw the following beakers um all right so i don't see any uh, numbers here but um uh different times let's do zero milliliters we can do here we'll do um i don't know four milliliters all right um we'll do eight milliliters and we'll do let's just say 10 milliliters well beyond that point all right so i'm going to draw out n h three and h three and i'm going to do four of them n h three all right at four milliliters i have neutralized half of them n h three and H3 um, and then NH4 plus NH4 plus I do have two chlorides in here because I had some acid all right at the eight milliliters I would have NH4 plus about four of them And then I have one, two, three, four chlorides. Only difference between this beaker is that I would have to continue to add acid. I have another H plus ion, so that's for the 10 milliliter one. H, I have an H plus and another chloride. Excess H, H plus ions. All right. And that is the end of this presentation. Thank you.